So you're probably sitting there and you have a poor credit or you have no credit and you want to have a PanFed credit card. In today's conversation, I'm going to spill all the beans that you need to, uh, to know. So we're going to talk about PanFed credit card approval with no credit or poor credit, how to get a, a massive amount. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or a tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk about a topic that is on the minds of everybody. Whether you are a PenFed member or not, you want to understand how to get a, a PenFed credit card with no credit or poor credit. And this question is very important because... PenFed does not have any secure credit card, okay? They used to back in the days, but they stopped doing it, I think, in 2019. So nowadays, you don't have a PenFed secure credit card. So the first hack, if you are trying to get a PenFed credit card with no credit or poor credit, you really want to become an authorized user on somebody else's credit card. This is important. Now, we all know the the, the old adage, right? First impressions count, don't they, right? So... You want to look around in your in your inner circle. If you have a parent, you have a, your spouse, or you have your dad, your mom, I don't care, your cousin, whatever. You want to find someone who has a potentially high FICO score, and you want to have, and the, the person has to be a PenFed member, of course, right? And you yourself you have to be a, pen, a PenFed member, also, right? We're talking about a credit union, so you got to be a PenFed member. So the, what you do is you talk to the person, and you have an agreement whereby you are. Uh, you are an authorized user on the person credit card and you know the funny thing is it works wonderfully why because you are gradually building your credit okay and, and the cool thing is you are actually parlaying this person's uh, high FICO score into your own FICO score so this is pretty good okay just make sure that you don't mess up the, the person's credit history in other words, you got to have uh, an agreement with a person in terms of how much you can spend. Don't you walk around and just mess somebody's credit score and credit card, okay? If the person tells you, I want you to spend $200 every month, stick to that. I want you to spend $100 every month, I want you to stick to that. Don't you try to go overboard here, okay? And uh, so if you are a good authorized user and uh, the primary card holder is also, a good, is also great in terms of uh, paying the, the balance back, Guess what? It is a win-win situation. You win and they win. Okay? So be, becoming an authorized user is basically the first step. In other words, you are gradually having a little bit of credit. And also, you are posting your benefit next-gen internal score, which is really important when we talk about benefit credit card approval. The second thing, boss, second thing I want to talk to you about is the share secure loan. See, the thing is, the PenFed does not have a secure credit card. We all agree with that, right? But they do have a share slash certificate secure loan. And this is pretty good, okay? So don't let this throw you off. No credit, bad credit. Don't believe the PenFed is going to is going to deny your ass. No. The thing is, you want to build credit. That's the thing. And you want to build credit within PenFed because this, is a, this has a dual benefit, Okay, first you are increasing your next your next gen PenFed internal score, which is quintessential as I've said before. But you're also building your FICO, which ultimately will help you get the, the credit card, the PenFed credit card that you need. Okay, so you you have obviously you need to have a a checking account, you need to have a, a share account, a certificate account, and you use the balance on in that certificate account to secure, to collateralize the loan, okay? And this works fantastically. And PenFed is not gonna ask you to, uh, they, they're not gonna check your FICO score, why? Because they have no risk. Because because the the money in your certificate account is basically the collateral, is basically the security here, okay? So this is a good avenue to build credit 
and also actually boost your chances when the time is right to apply for a PenFed credit card successfully. Okay, so very important. And one thing I want you to remember is that you want to open a share secured account, a share account, a certificate account, because it is a great investment. When we talk about certificate of accounts, this is kind of similar to a, a CD, okay? When you have CDs, the CDs are issued by banks and credit unions, but share certificate accounts are only issued by credit unions, okay? It's a great investment. You have a, a guaranteed or fixed rate of return. It's great for short-term and long-term investment. It's great. It's also great to use it as um, as a, an emergency, uh, as a rainy day fund, okay? So, boss, what I'm telling you, mother, father, because what I'm told, talking to you is if you have poor credit, do not despair, okay? Don't you walk around and just being, being desperate that, you know, you can't qualify for a PenFed credit card. You can start by applying for a share secure loan. You can start by being an authorized user on somebody else's credit card, PenFed credit card. So gradually, you can actually build a little bit of credit. The third thing I want you to pay attention to is uh, what I call country logic. Okay, you got to be exact. If you are looking for a PenFed credit card and you have zero credit or you have no or you have low credit, you got to you got to apply what I call country logic. What is that? You got to give some money to PenFed for PenFed to give you money. Come on, boys. This is important. So I want you to work on your deposits. I want you to beef up your deposit. I want you to bring your your deposit your deposit account to something consequential. This is important. All right. I want you to make to to deposit as much money as you can with PenFed so that they in return can actually help you out too. See, we always say on this show and, and listen, this is country logic. If you have a skinny ass FICO score, you better have a fat checking account. You can't be you can't have a skinny ass FICO score and have a skinny ass checking accounts. Boss you are broke and you and you can't get a I mean everybody knows that PenFed is more conservative than Navy Fed is when it comes to uh, approving credit cards and loans and whatnot and so the thing is when when we talk about PenFed we are elevating the level of discourse in terms of their their uh, criteria for uh, credit worthiness okay so where Navy Fed will actually uh, let you pass with a 500 FICO score PenFed might raise the bar to 550 that's just what it is. Don't try to fight the don't try to fight the system. Play within the system. Understand the rules of the game because credit is a game. Okay? So you want to beef up your deposits. You want to you want to increase your overall deposit with PenFed. You want to open more than one account, okay? I'm talking about having a money market account. I am talking about having a CD account, a certificate of deposit, a share certificate account. A checking account a savings account and and if you have a, enough capacity in terms of liquidity i want you to open an ira an individual retirement account so the more accounts you open the, the better okay and even better here if you can set up a direct deposit into a PenFed account that is fantastic you know why guess what 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 no 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 it is kind of cool because you have PenFed can see your cash inflows they can see that you are making money every uh, two weeks or every month or every week, okay? So you have that, that advantage of uh, they can actually calculate independently your DTI because they can look at uh, whatever you charge you charge on your on your debit card and they can see your, your cash inflows. So when you look at cash outflows versus cash inflows, you can approximately, you know, sort of uh, calculate the DTI. So it's important to beef up your deposit with PenFed. Very important. I want to talk to you about joint account. You know, the, 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 the important thing is that if you have poor credit or no credit and you want to have a PenFed credit card account, if you are lucky enough to be in a relationship with someone or to have a relative who can actually help you out and you can have a, a joint account, this is fantastic. You know why? Because, again, you, are, you, you can parlay the, the other person's high FICO score into a joint card holdership let me explain the thing here is that this kind of works in uh, it works similar to what i said earlier 
it works similarly to what I said earlier about uh, being an authorized user. The only difference is that for as an authorized user, you are basic. You kind of have the back seat, okay. But if you are a joint account holder, a joint card holder, you have a front seat. You are primarily liable for whatever is charged on on the card, okay. And this is and PenFed offers that, okay. So this is something you can do. You can actually have a you, if you if your spouse or your cousin or your aunt or your uncle or anybody has a higher FICO score in the family, you want to have this with them. Uh, obviously, you can have this also with friends, but you know, it's all about reliability and trustworthiness. If you trust the person, go ahead and do it. It, it works fantastically, okay? So you basically, let's say you have a 300 FICO score or you have FICO, you have zero FICO score for that matter. You're just like 18 years old or 21 years old or, and, and whatnot and you've never used credit, uh, you, you, you've never used credit before. So basically, you are talking to that person and you both agree to co-apply for a credit card, for a PenFed credit card. That way, you can gradually build your credit within PenFed and also outside of PenFed. Okay, this is really good. Now, remember though, so that when we talk about joint credit cards versus co-signers, like joint credit card holders versus co-signers, it's uh, it's basically kind of similar. Okay, the only difference is that your your responsibility as a co-signer is more like um, it, it happens every month or every 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 yeah every month, whereas as a joint credit card holder, your responsibility happens more often. Every day that there are charges on the card, you can be on the hook. OK, so it's something you got to think about here. So but this is a great, great uh, hack that we have seen a lot of people use across the country. And, and uh, you can actually bump up your credit score very fast. I want to talk to you about membership. Oh, yeah, this is important, boss, because <laughs> is anybody just listening? Oh, yeah. Well, the thing here is that we, I, you know, listen, if you have zero credit or you have a poor credit and you're trying to get a approved for a PenFed credit card, you need to pay attention to your membership. Why? Because everybody's just kind of uh, impatient. Let's say you just uh, got approved for membership. OK, you became a member uh, three months ago or two months ago. Hold on. Hold your horses. Be patient here. You just came to the party and you just want to a par You just want to partake right away. No. Go back, go back there and just, I want you to chill, okay? You want to wait a little bit for six months. Six months, you want to, you know, look around, just use your use your, your, your account responsibly. In the, in the meantime, one thing you want to have is you want to build your MPR, what we call your multi-product relationship. You want to beef up your deposits. You want to increase your deposits, okay? So the thing is that your, uh, the timing of your uh, membership serves as a barometer of your liquidity situation and also your stance within the PenFed family. Let me just break it down for you. I know I see your eyes already. You're like, okay, what is he, what is he talking about? <laughs> Let's just break it down. See, when we talk about membership, we are looking at several layers, okay? First of all, how long you've been with uh, PenFed? That's the first part. Second, second layer is your NPR. Do you have enough money in your account? That's the second thing. The third layer is the number of members in your household who qualify as uh, PenFed members or are already PenFed members. This has an important element. Okay, it has an important role because everybody be thinking, hey, when you apply for a credit card, you are on your own. Yes, it works for banks, but for credit unions, credit unions are members oriented. So PenFed pays attention to everybody in your family, who, in your household, for that matter, who happens, who happen to be anybody who happens to be a PenFed member. Okay, so they're gonna look at that. They're gonna look at your your own net worth. I'm talking about you, you who have zero credit, you who have no credit, you who have poor credit. They're gonna look at your uh, your total assets minus your total liabilities. OK, and in case and they will see, for instance, what kind of debts, what kind of liabilities you currently have with them in terms of let's say you have a mortgage where you are you, you have code applied with the, about it. you have code applied for a mortgage with somebody else. They, they will pay attention to that, too. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to another uh, section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. I'm still having a conversation with you today about PenFed credit card approval with uh, zero credit or poor credit. How can you boost your chances of approval, okay? I want to talk to you now about clean checking. Oh, yeah. Well, I see a lot of uh, I, I see a lot of people be like, what is he talking about? And I see a few comments in our, in our comment section on YouTube talking about why is he talking about checking Whereas, you know, my ass is here wanting to hear about credit. Well, there's a strong correlation, boss. I don't care what anybody says. We have done research about this. We we have the facts. There was a strong correlation between checking history and credit history. And when it comes to PenFed, they will be paying attention to your uh, checking history with them. This is why if you want to uh, get a credit card approved at some point in time, you want to maintain a history of clean checking. Okay, I'm talking about no NSF, no non-sufficient fund. Don't you don't you just have a overdraft after overdraft? What's up with that? Okay, so I want you to really get your financial ass in order and make sure that you don't actually uh, spend more than you earn or more than is available on, on, on the account. Okay, is anybody going to tell those folks who are constantly running overdraft on their account that this is bad, it's bad for their credit? See, the thing is, people don't seem to see uh, the uh, the linkage, the correlation between credit history and checking history. I'm, I'm here to tell you it's important. You know why it's important? Because credit unions like PenFed and Navy Fed and whatnot, or even financial institutions in general, they check also your check systems. Hello? Did you hear that? Check systems. So they constantly check. The, they, they look at check systems. They look at your FICO score. They look at everything. If you remember, there is a an automatic check that goes on to see if a member is just playing games or they're just for real, okay? It's all about financial responsibility. When we talk about financial responsibility, people sit around and just think about FICO score. No, Jose. No way, Jose. When we talk about financial financial responsibility, you also have to think about your checking history. So what I'm the, the takeaway here is I want you to maintain a history of clean checking if you want to boost your chances of being approved for a pen for a credit card, okay? And you need to have an impeccable payment history. Also, on any loan, you may have co-signed or co-borrowed from PenFed. I'm, as I said earlier, this could be a mortgage or a share certificate loan. To close today's conversation, I'm just, uh, I want to give you a few pro tips, okay? And the whole thing is that if you have a zero credit or you have poor credit, I don't want you to sit around and throw yourself a pity party. Don't complain. Don't whine. It ain't worth it. You know, walking around, yeah, you know, I have zero credit. I have poor credit. I can't qualify for a PenFed credit card. I can qualify for a Navy Fed credit card. Well, hello? Hello? So what I want you to do is to get your, your, your ass up and think about having a plan. And I'm sharing with you the plan. You need a formula. You need a code for success. OK, so it's all when we talk about having no credit, what does that mean? Well, if you're young, you're 18, there's nothing you can do about it. You know what? This is what it is. You just have to start from somewhere. But if you have bad credit, bad credit is actually the result of a past misfortune in terms of your financial life. Right. Bankruptcy, collections, you name it, whatever. Everybody has. A, I mean, people have been there, done that. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that. Take actions, okay, and think about if you don't get a, approved at PenFed, this ain't the end of the world. Come on. Can anybody tell Joe that this ain't the end, the end of the world, that there are a lot of, there are gazillions of opportunities out there in terms of credit cards? PenFed is not the only, the only institution here, all right? So if they don't actually, uh, if they don't approve you, do not throw yourself a pity party. I want to repeat that, okay? Apply elsewhere. Look for, I mean, for instance, Navy Fed. Navy Fed has a, a secure credit card. So this could be an opportunity here. This could be an opportunity to look for a starter credit card. And Navy Fed is, is a little more flexible in terms of uh, those things. So look for other, uh, or your, your, uh, your local credit union. I mean, obviously, I'm talking about the, the, the big national credit unions, the, the Navy Fed of the world, the, the, the Penn Fed, the CCU, the Consumers Credit Union, and whatnot. But you can look locally and see which credit union applies to your geography 
and apply for a secure credit card there and start little. It's all about making the first step, boss. It's all about making the first step. So the thing is, yeah, you have a backup plan. That's the, that's the key takeaway here. I want you to have a backup plan so that if they don't approve you, you always have an, you have another thing that you have another way to build credit. Thank you so much for your attention, folks. I really appreciate it. Today, I was just talking to you about PenFed credit card approval with zero credit or no credit. And I give you a few tips and hacks and and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and tricks on how to actually uh, get approved. So become an authorized user on somebody else's credit card. You might want to try a share secure loan, trying to beef up your deposits. You want to consider having a joint account in terms of credit card with somebody who has a better credit history than you. You want to maintain a clean history of membership. You want to maintain a clean history of checking. And I close to this conversation by giving you a few pro tips. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>